Good evening. My name is Tom Rayholm. I'm chairman of the Public Works Committee. We're meeting in the first floor conference room at City Hall on Tuesday, May 5th at 6 o'clock. We're also on video conferencing and people could be listening on the telephone, but I guess I'd like to start with calling a roll call. Uh, Tom Rayholm, chair, present. Dean Benneman, alderman, present. Joe Eichstead, city, city engineer. Jay Catnall, committee member. Joe Terry, Director of Public Works. Shay Blizzard, we are. Are there any other older persons that are tuning in on Zoom with us? We'll go to item number one, and that's to review the DPW report. All right, so the uh, DPW report was sent out this afternoon. We will have it on the city's website uh, sometime tomorrow. Gonna go through just a few highlights. It is a lengthy report. Um, I do want to recognize the, the work that staff has done. You know, every month you can review these reports and see the accomplishments, but uh, uh, we got a lot of work done. Um, at the airport, the hangar project continues. That's uh, looking pretty substantial right now, and, and they're in uh, some of the final phases, uh, pouring the floor, some exterior and interior lighting, those types of things. Uh, in engineering, a few things that uh, we've accomplished there, the degradation fees, the, the draft methodologies for the degradation fees is complete, and a draft right away uh, permit application and fee structure is complete. I anticipate having that uh, as a referral for next month. The special assessment study, staff has finalized the research portion of this study, and the report will be drafted during the month of May we anticipate being able to uh, make that presentation at the June meeting. Um, flood modeling along the Wisconsin River in partnership with the uh, Wisconsin Department of Administration. Um, communication is continued with that. Uh, we received two proposals, one from MSA and one from GEI. And uh, it was mutually decided that GEI provided the best proposal and uh, the DOA is is accepting that proposal and is going to move forward with them and uh, that project and that proposal is within the limits the city set for the city to participate so we're encouraged by that. Uh, the rail spur, uh, Metalco and Sienna are working on an operational plan for the, uh, the rail spur off of 48th. 90% uh, plans are complete. The petition was sent to the Office of the Commission of Railroads um, in April. Um, conceptual plans are complete and are currently being reviewed by CN. I'd like to point out uh, construction work. We're, we're doing very well. Uh, 10th Street from airport to Grove. The water main uh, for that project is complete. 14 catch basins and three sanitary manholes and three storm manholes have been rebuilt on that project. Uh, subgrade is done, road base is, is in place. It does need to be fine graded for asphalt. And as soon as we can get that asphalt contract approved, we'll be ready to uh, schedule that work. Chase Street from 17th Avenue South to 21st Avenue South. We did have one block of carryover from last year on that project. So we did remove the existing curb and gutter and asphalt pavement, completed the installation of the uh, sanitary manhole at the intersection of 20th Avenue South. Sanitary main from 20th to 21st has been installed along with six services. The water main in that same area has been installed and, uh, and that work continues to uh, to move forward. Um, during the month of April, the uh, city had crews out patching streets six different occasions, 10 catch basin repairs were completed and concretes formed up on those catch basin repairs. For wastewater, spring flows have remained typical and have posed no threats to overall treatment. Uh, the wastewater process remains strong and discharge permit parameters are uh, near single digits, which is well below our, our discharge limits. In April, the plant set a new record for kilowatts produced in-house. Uh, during several periods, the utility was 
generating more power than it was consuming. If, th if this trend can be continued, it's possible to save over about $100,000 annually. It appears that the high strength waste program that the staff down there are conducting um, is boosting biogas production and, and paying off uh, dividends well. A new bypass pumping is complete and in place at the Dewey lift station, two mile lift station, and Whip Rock lift station. This bypass plumbing will provide the ability for staff to pump around the lift station with a trailer pump that the city owns in the event that the station becomes inoperable. It allows the city to have another level of insurance in the event of a power outage or lift station failure. Um, you know, in, in the event of a power outage, oftentimes the lift station maybe can, um, power can be connected with a generator, but if there's a problem with the lift station, uh, you know, we may only have a few hours to make repairs or uh, prepare some specialized pumping equipment. This bypass pumping makes that a lot quicker and easier. And finally, I wanna mention that the city of Wisconsin Rapids has been nominated and awarded a National American Public Works Association Project of the Year Award for small cities and rural communities in the environmental category for the West Side Pumping Station Force Main Replacement Project that we did last year. This is a, a prestigious national award. There's only one in this category um, awarded every year in the entire nation. So we're honored to uh, receive it. The presentation would be this fall or this August um, at the national event in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. However, that event has been canceled. So I'm not exactly sure what the, uh, you know, how the city will be awarded. But um, I do want to point out you know, one of the one of the factors that I believe um, resulted in the city winning this award was the strong partnership between city staff and contractor staff and the success of this project. Um, we worked very well together. Um, we were able to help out the contractor um, and get paid for it for some yard space and things like that. And at the same time, the contractor was able to help us with uh, with some uh, paving prep on Blue Heron Drive, and um, that went well. The project itself is a very envir environmentally friendly way to get sewage from the west side of the river to the east side of the river, and that it was a directional bore through the rock under the river. And so um, there's uh, almost impossibility of contaminating the river with wastewater with this type of method. It, it just doesn't, it crosses the river, but it crosses underneath the bedrock. Um, so there's quite a bit in this packet. I would encourage everybody to um, take a few minutes and, and read through it and appreciate the work done by all of the staff of the Public Works Department. Thank you, Joe. Any questions by anybody or anything? Any comments? Okay. And I know several of the items that you mentioned are very, very important. The West Side lift station's a big one. I know that was a long planning process to get to even to uh, get it done. And uh, this award that's coming is uh, something else too. So thank you. Item number three, discuss the, oh, before I get to that, all the person Scott Kellogg joined us this evening. Hey. So, so he's present. Hi, Scott. Item three, discuss the literal application of MC 6.04, parent one, parent A, parent five, as it relates to sidewalk and physical limitations on the proposed 15th Street North project from Apricot Street to Irvine Street, and consider modifying the ordinance to address these types of situations. Joe, when you guys wanna address this yeah. to start with? Sure. And we'll jump in. So in, in your packets, there is a, um, uh, black and white map of the, the, the project area and so I'll be I'll, I'll be referencing that um, for this item but 15th Street it's a three block project that's proposed to be constructed in 2021 and uh, the southerly most block from Apricot to Irving Street has more than 50% of that block with sidewalk existing in that block the existing right-of-way for that street is is uh, 50 feet, which is less than our typical local
Maple Street, which would add 60 feet right away. But um, the question came up during our initial scoping of the project was um, what to do with the sidewalk. Some of the sidewalk appears to vary outside of the city's current right of way, and it's one block long. Immediately to the south of this block is uh, Woods Grove Park. Um, it's a very uh, residential area, the whole, the whole neighborhood. And so, um, you know, like I said, the city ordinance requires sidewalk to be in re reinstalled. However, with the, uh, the right of way uh, standards, and um, we'd like to put a 36 foot street back in, which is also following city standards. It does create some concerns with snow storage and um, possibly some extra real estate that would have to be purchased. But um, so we, we laid out a few options. Uh, option one would be to strictly follow the city standards, install a 36 foot wide street on the 50 foot right of way and um, reinstall the sidewalk right behind the, the new curb and gutter. Um, that, one's, that one's from a cost to benefit standpoint is probably the least preferred. Um, but option two would be to replace as is. So we'd be putting a 30 foot street back in and um, replace the sidewalk uh, to the extent that we can in its current location. And then option three would be to modify uh, municipal code to allow for sidewalk to be removed in certain instances such as this. And uh, that would that would be our our recommendation would be option three would be to consider modifying the ordinance to allow for um, a situation like this to be um, at least considered differently. So a couple of the things I did write up some draft language in the packet. Get back to that here. So under the staff recommendation, there's an excerpt from the municipal code. So sections one through four, they identify where sidewalk by ordinance should be installed. And um, section five, uh, the section that we're discussing with 50% more of sidewalk on a block that's already existing um, could be modified so that um, sidewalk is installed in those instances when that block is also connecting to a block or street with conditions that match conditions identified in one through four. So if, for instance, this local street tees into a collector street, for instance, that would be a situation that, well, if it's already got 50% sidewalk existing, it might make sense to finish putting it in in that case because it's connecting to a collector street, which also has sidewalk on it. Um, so that's, that's the recommendation at this point. I guess before we proceed with any further design, we want to get in front of the committee for consideration. Okay, Joel. Oh, just wanted to mention that if sidewalk didn't exist here now, this street doesn't warrant it. Our our ordinance does, just doesn't warrant it there. It's a local street. Um, yeah, so this is one of those situations where in any other situation, we wouldn't be putting sidewalk in here um, except for that some exists now. Yeah, it is a strange, <laughs> somewhat of a strange situation. However, sidewalk got put in yeah. years ago, even, you know, because yeah, it, it's a three block project, right? Yes. And two of the blocks don't have any sidewalk. Correct. And uh, this block in question, most of it does, but uh, there is that one lot that doesn't, so. Um, This may be one where it makes sense to 
take the sidewalk out to so we could have a go to a 36 foot wide street um, and there would be parking on each side then if i remember right from reading this yeah there would be two 10 foot travel lanes and two eight foot yeah. parking lanes okay. So the, the, the street itself right now is 30, right? Yeah, so and today is that what that, is that the whole thing? The next two blocks are the same, aren't they? Yeah, so we would, with the project, I mean, whatever uh, is determined with this um, this block, I guess we would we would proceed with the right. remaining three blocks as such. Yeah, so the street will be 30, if we do this, the street will be 30, 60. Yep, for those, 30, for, for those three blocks, blocks yeah. Scott? When I read it, it, I recall it said there you had an open house and it was 54, 50% for it and 50% really didn't want it. And what were the rationale for the 50% for it? That, that was Washington Street. Um, oh, be that was one. a different one? Yeah. That's that's that'll that'll be next. That's okay. Sorry about that. I think Mr. Gannon uh, has wanted to ask something. Yeah, so Jake? my thought on this is being that the whole street doesn't have sidewalk, I think it would make most sense to do as was discussed and make a wider road with travel lanes or, or um, the lanes on the side. And I believe that would save those people in that neighborhood money as well because then they wouldn't have to pay towards the sidewalks. Is that correct? That's correct. That seems to make sense to me as well. And I, I, you guys cut out there. I was asking the question: Is that correct that they would, those people in that neighborhood, would not have to pay for the sidewalk replacement? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean that would be what makes most sense to me. Then is that we just do away with the sidewalk there and extend the road. Yeah, Joel. So the action that the staff is requesting the committee consider is uh, to modify the ordinance for sidewalk MC 6.04 parent 1 parent a parent 5 uh, sidewalk shall be installed on any block of a street which has 50 percent of the sidewalk in that block existing to allow for sidewalk to re be re removed in certain circumstances stances such as right-of-way widths under 60 feet Yep, and that have that come back as an ordinance change. Right. So, so the council meeting the, along with this report, if the committee makes this recommendation. Uh, staff would work with the city attorney to draft the language and bring the language to the council at the next council meeting. Jane, question, Mr. Mayor. So, would that also address maybe the sidewalk on 18th Avenue then? Because or is the side that was different okay i just it doesn't make sense to put in sidewalk that's only partial and it's so, expense to the homeowner so eight on a road that won't 18th have. avenue doesn't warrant sidewalk. completing sidewalk right. right now yep so my thought so this exception wouldn't apply there because when i say it doesn't warrant where sidewalk isn't complete where it's scattered yep on um, towards the south end of that proposed project um less than 50 percent. it's less than 50 percent already so there's no warrant to complete it okay perfect yeah so you, so that would be pulled and correct right? okay then in this instance i agree with everybody because why put a sidewalk in that goes to nowhere basically mm -hmm. and, and at an expense to the homeowner and and we wouldn't put it there to begin with correct by our policies thank you i'll make a motion that we Proceed with the change in our ordinance, uh, as Joe has read here, and that uh, we approve the removal of the sidewalk that is presently there, and that the street be reconstructed as a 36 foot wide street without a sidewalk. I'll second it. 
We have a motion and a second. Anybody else have any comments or anything? Hearing none, committee will vote. All those in favor, respond by aye. 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 Ayes have it. Three to zero. Item number four. Consider amending the preliminary resolution for Washington Street to include parcel 34-05132 for the installation of sidewalk. Joe, one of you guys want to start off with this? Yeah, definitely. So uh, Washington Street's a construction project for, for this summer. Um, and all, so the, the project is 12th to Baker Drive, just past 18th, 18th Street. And um, all of Washington Street up to 17th has sidewalk on both sides of the street. And um, of course, during the design, uh, as we were looking at um, putting, redesigning the sidewalk and seeing what that sidewalk is connecting up to, on the very east side of the project, uh, immediately adjacent to Baker Drive on the north side of Washington Street. There's about 45 feet of sidewalk that's missing. And so um, this is in part to, to, to see about adding that parcel into the assessment to complete that 45 feet of sidewalk. So the importance of it, at least from, from what staff looked at, is that that's immediately adjacent to Baker Baker Drive. If you cross the street there, there's a, there's a crosswalk and sidewalk on the other side that would take you north to Robinson Park or across the, underneath the overpass through the pedestrian walkway. And so we thought it worthwhile to, to bring it to the committee and, and ask and see if, if, uh, if that would make sense to uh, uh, amend the preliminary resolution to include that one parcel for 40, about 45 feet of of um, sidewalk to be installed there. Well, to, to me, I guess it makes sense to finish it and have sidewalk there on both sides of the street. That it would, uh, the you know, the rest of it has it, and what it leads to the sidewalk to, as you said, get to the park or to the underpass going over under 54. There, it, to me, I guess it just makes sense to finish it off. I yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think this is a highly traveled area by patrons, whether it's on foot or, or bike, and that being the areas already have part of the sidewalk and, and not in others, I think it makes sense to just make this a continuation. So what was the reasoning behind 50-50 at the open house? Oh, um, some people just didn't want to pay for it was just the assessment. assessment. Yeah. Okay. Structuring two, two items, but there's really just the one. Yeah. So the other, the other should should address it. The other part of it is that the sidewalk. Um, here just to make sure that I've got this right. So Washington Street, we've got sidewalk existing on both sides from 12th, basically all the way from 8th Street all the way up to 17th or 16th, 16th. There's some on 17th on both sides, but not everywhere. Okay, so up to 16th and then um, you get into the 50% existing in the, or more than 50% existing in the block from 16th to 17th. And then from 17th to 18th, there's very little existing sidewalk. And then you get into at least more than 50% hard surface in the, in the last block. So that was the other, the referral actually had kind of two items. One was addressing, um, reviewing, consider extending sidewalk from Washington 
Street from 17th to Baker Drive, and then the second one was was meant to uh, amend the preliminary resolution for that one parcel. So I, I didn't catch that in the agenda until it was until we got to this item. So I'm not sure if that makes sense. Was the that part from in that 17th that area? Was that included in our preliminary resolution? Yes. To put sidewalk in. It was just a clarify yep. that so that yep our budget so all, we has, have, so all we have left is that last part the 45 feet yeah the right. preliminary resolution for the the other block um, is all covered our design includes it and our yep. budget for the project includes that sidewalk also. and that was what the discussion was in the open house is from some of those folks that yep. don't have it but knew that they might get it but because sidewalk has been a hot topic lately thought we'd at least mention it so that everybody's on the same page that doing so is consistent with the preliminary resolution that's already been passed and you know the plans and specifications and like Joe said half the people at the open house were in favor of it the other half weren't so um, you know, the only request to make the change is that one parcel for that short stretch of about 45 feet Any questions of anybody? It seems to make sense to complete it. We did have a motion or second. Wait. Not yet. Not yet. I'll move that we put in the sidewalk to, uh, on that last parcel to finish off the project with the uh, sidewalk to Baker Drive. I'll second that. Any questions? Hearing none, the committee will vote. All in favor, respond by aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Uh, item five, review the city engineer's report relating to referral to consider center line on Chestnut Street from Hill Street to 8th Street South to control vehicle speeds while pedestrians are present. Okay, I'll just quick run through the report and then see if there's any discussion questions after that okay so um, so from our understanding uh, the request for centerline striping was primarily to control vehicle speeds while pedestrians were present and so that was kind of what we what we started looking at um, did a little bit of research um, found some information on the Federal Highway Administration website, a report and study that was done uh, specifically to center lines and um, their effectiveness in controlling speeds. And um, from the research, there's, there's, there's very little uh, impact for controlling speeds, uh, maybe a mile, or, mile per hour or two mile per hour uh, reduction, uh, depending on day or night time. Um, subsequent to that, we checked the manual manual on uniform traffic control devices, and um, that manual s specifies when when to use pavement markings and how you should use them, and, and provides criteria for that. Um, so that manual specifies center lines shall be installed on all paved urban arterials and collector streets with. Uh, 6,000 vehicles per day or greater and all paved streets with three or more travel lanes and uh, Chestnut Street does not carry that much traffic and it's only a two-lane road um, also point out it's a 40-foot wide street with parking on both sides um, additionally the manual mentions uh, using engineering judgment um, for establishing center line markings on travel ways less than 16 feet wide due to encroaching traffic or uh, issues caused by parked vehicles. Uh, so with a 40 foot wide street, there would be two 12 foot travel lanes. And so although parking on both sides, I don't believe that there's, there's much of an issue um, with that either. Um, so we also looked at uh, the speeds on the corridor 
check the, um, the traffic volumes that way as well. Um, the manual specifies that we have to, if we're putting center lines out there, we'd have to establish no passing zones if they were needed. Um, certainly from Lincoln Street to the west, we would need, we'd need to um, have a no passing zone for 550 feet west of there. So we'd have the double yellow and then we'd have to look at the rest of the corridor for, for dashed yellow if it was warranted. Uh, the speed study resulted in an 85th percentile speed of 33 miles per hour. And we typically see around 30 mile per hour, 85th percentile speed for our, our normal local streets that are posted at 25. Uh, we looked into traffic accidents as well. And um, you know, there's a, a variety of accidents that have occurred since 1994, 16 of them uh, that are recorded and at least that we were able to access. Um, none of them were speed related accidents. And um, none of them were associated with pedestrians that were uh, outside of the A Street intersection. Um, so I guess from what we found with the study and what we looked at, um, center lines aren't, aren't warranted for this street. Um, and even, even if they were, they, they're not, not going to be very effective at controlling the speeds on the road. Um, we did provide some other options though that, um, you know, if, if the desire is to control speeds, that um, there's a variety of other things that, that we, could, we could look at further. Um, one of them being increased enforcement, which I'd say we should start with that because it's a, it's a low hanging fruit type item. But otherwise there's additional pavement markings that you, you could paint out slow or speed limit 25 miles per hour right on the pavement. Um, speed humps or speed tables, those are options. Um, flashing LED signage and um, the um, the recommendation that, that we came up with at this time anyway was that um, you know, given given the 85th percentile speed at 30 miles an hour, not, or just just above 30 miles an hour, not anything that's real extreme from what we would typically see. That um, the travel speed isn't so much of an issue, but um, you know, there's other ways that we could we could um, take a look at things. You know, if pedestrian safety is the concern, you know, better visibility at nighttime. You know, take a look at the street lighting some of those factors that we can look at as well. Anybody, Scott? Uh, this is my referral. Um, basically, it came from some constituents I have that travel in front of Assumption School on Chestnut. And when they say that there's events like basketball games and so forth, it's not necessarily the speed when there's no cars there, but there's when you have cars on both sides of the street, some, uh, some of the drivers are coming down that hill quite fast. And so some of my constituents are saying, well, we heard that you're doing some lining on Chestnut um, between Lincoln and 8th Street because of the aquatic center or that corner. Um, have you thought about doing this because sometimes we have a challenge. So the idea that if there's no cars there, the speed is a mood issue. But when you have cars on both sides, some cars are coming down quite fast. And when you have those events at Assumption, they have it. Then what compounds it too. Or you, during the Raptors games. Yeah, you, right. Exactly. <laughs> now with the aquatic center and the rafters, you're going to have cars on both sides. And will cars just come down that hill fast? And you have lines on Chestnut from um, 8th Street West, and that's a wide street. <laughs> you know, I mean, you wonder why you even have to have those. But on Chestnut coming this way, you have, 
You would have to probably have it. You have to have it in front of the aquatic center. And you're going to have to do the realigning. And it seems to me the cost of paint to just continue it down there um, while you're doing the other lining is is minimal. It's you know, and and would it keep cars when you have cars on both sides? Will it keep cars in their lane and not have someone come down in the middle quickly? And that's what some of my constituents are saying. So when it came to me, I thought it seems like if you're going to do it, maybe now's the time to do it. And um, so that's the issue why I raised it and passed it on to the council or the committee. So. Okay, thank you. Thanks, uh, Joel. Just, so just for some clarification, the, the paint that exists on Chestnut at 8th Street just is at the intersection and that, that's for channelizing. Um, that's just so that people know where they should be at the intersection. It doesn't extend um, any further than the driveway just west of the intersection at 8th Street. Are you going to put lines in there too for parking? I'm just curious. So, right, so the, the, the parking along Chestnut is currently painted and that would continue to be painted. Um, you know, that angle parking on the north side of Chestnut. Right. Yes. Well, from what you're, there's no reason why you could, you know, like it, we don't, um, you don't have, <laughs> it's like, what I, I appreciate what you did, Joe, looking at the research. It takes time. You know, a person can come up with a thing and you took a lot of time to look at it. But it doesn't say in what you said that you couldn't do that. And um, so I'm thinking, well, for the a few uh, gallons of paint, well, why don't we do it? Rather than, the, it, the, it, you're not prevented from doing it. And that's where I'm coming from. So one, thing I I saw it, it, one thing I saw in the, oops, Jake trying to get in. Can I speak, Chris? Yeah, go ahead, Jake. I just, I just wanted to follow up on what Mr. Kellogg said and say I couldn't agree more. I think this is a unique spot, a unique situation, having a subject in school there. I actually drive down that road a lot. And even if you don't mean to go fast, there is a hill there. People could just happen to do it because of gravity. So anything we could do to help control speeds there, even if it hasn't been too much of an issue, we could be on, uh, we could be taking forward on this, whether it's the, I think two things that are cheap ideas that could help with this is again, like you said, paint doesn't cost much. And LED lighting, just reminding people of the speed limits because it is a cautious area and, and during the school year especially and sometimes on, on late winter nights it gets dark early, um, there's a lot of traffic going through there. So anything that we can do to remind people to slow down I think is a good idea. Joel? So a couple things I think to consider here. Um, number one, paint isn't effective at Center line paint is not effective at controlling speed. And the width of the roadway is narrow enough. If you drive down there, and it's hard to right now because there's no school, there's no events. The width of the roadway is such that if cars are parked and you're driving down the road following the speed limit and there's no oncoming traffic, you're gonna be over the center line because you wanna maintain a little bit of space between that, those parked vehicles. If, if you had it painted double yellow, which you'd have to paint it double yellow there, you can't, you can't paint a skip, it would then become unlawful to cross the center line. Why, why can't, you have it on Chestnut going west, you know, dashes, or right. you, could, you could go in and out of that yellow line. Why couldn't you have dashes going east down in front of uh, Assumption, then you could go in and out of that line. You, you, go ahead, Joe. So um, west of Lincoln Street, we